From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I have eaten some mushrooms. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. And uh, here we are at the end of another year, and another year that I have lived alone. You may recall, at the end of my last live-in relationship, I had told my ex, I'm not going to make you leave during the holidays. So you can stay through the holidays, and then January 31st, that's the deadline. You'll be out. And um, she waited till the last possible minute. The day the movers arrived, she literally... She was in bed under the covers watching a movie with her dog by her side. And when the movies arrived, I had to show them, take this, don't take that, move this box, take this last, this stays. I had to do that. I had to get everything on the truck and get her out the door. And ever since that day, I have lived alone. Oh, I've dated, I've had sex, I have traveled, I have had a fantastic life. Many things have happened to me over that period of time. Bought a second home, did some renovations on my existing home. I've traveled several times to Europe, South America. Enjoyed that, Central America. My life has been fantastic. I... Once again, as I reach the end of another year, I think back on when that relationship ended. And I say to myself this. Why, oh why, oh why, do people jump in and feel they need to be in a relationship or they need to have someone living in their house? By the way, I'm not saying that in your life you should never do that. If that's what you want to do, maybe someday you will. I worry about the immature folks out there who they, they, they leave their parents' homes and immediately they have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they have to move in with them. There always has to be somebody there. You know, I've had periods in my life when I was like that and I've had periods in my life when I was not like that. And I must say that personally the most rewarding times I've spent are the times I've spent alone. And I want to say this to the people who are serious about having relationships or getting married, okay? because I have told you on the air I'm not a big fan of marriage. But I do believe, having been married and divorced four times, I do believe that you have to live with somebody. If you have to live with somebody, you have to have spent time alone first. You have to get to know yourself. What you like, what you don't like, what your schedule is, what you like to eat, what time you like to get up. Silly things. These are all things that you need to know about yourself. I don't think you can love anybody. I don't think you can have a successful relationship with anybody until you've spent that time alone. And yet many people are unwilling or unable to do that. I don't understand the people who go from lily pad to lily pad. The people who jump from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. I don't understand it. Don't get it. But yet, there they are. They're out there. They call this show all the time. As I complete another year of living alone... I just want to remind you of some of the benefits of living alone. I want to remind you not to feel sorry for people like me. Don't feel sorry for us. On Thanksgiving, I'm going to have 25 people at my home. Most family Thanksgivings won't have 25 people at their home. I will spend Christmas up at my ranch with a big, beautiful Christmas tree and a few people around me. But by and large, I live alone. When I go home at night, I've got uh, 
I've got a wonderful place to live, and I make sure that I've got great things to do. And by spending this time alone, I think it makes me a more interesting person and, frankly, more certain than ever of what I want in my life and what I don't. And the more I do it, the more I wonder why more people don't do this. You know, life expectancy for men now in the United States is 77 years old. And for women, 81. There is no rush to be jumping out there when you're 20 years old or 21 or 18 and, and, and think you've got the love of your life. You haven't. You've got somebody you're going to share a place with for a while, and it's like changing your underwear, changing your roommate. It's, it's silly. You're fooling yourself if you think you're in love with that person. You're just not. You might be in lust with that person. You might be in like with that person. But uh, I really think it's very rare that somebody meets someone that young and, 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 and manages to stay with them for another 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Those days are over. They're over. So you are much better off working on your career, working on yourself, working on getting your act together, getting your finances together, paying your bills, putting some money away, maybe buying yourself a house, a house that if you own it before you live with someone, if you own it before you get married, that house will belong to you forever. Let me tell you something. I own a house that has survived a marriage and has survived relationships I am not one of those people who calls in, who has to move out of my own house. I don't have to move out of my house. Others move out of my house. It's mine, and no one can take it away from me. And that's what I wish for you. That's what I think you need. I know a lot of people get pissed off at the fact that I am happy, happy, happy. And they try to convince me I'm really not happy. <laughs> but it's been years now. And if you guys don't think I could have somebody move in there, if you think that there aren't women who have wanted to be there, wanted to move in, you're wrong. There are many who wanted to be in there, and uh, they're not in. So um, I will talk to you about this at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Why in the world do people feel the need to constantly be in a relationship? You know, why do you need to have someone living at your place? Why is that? Dave on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. I love your show. I got a comment to make regarding your, your topic. All right. You know, I, Tom, I, I like your show. I think you're a good guy. You mean well. I've had a hot, a lot more women than you'll ever have in your life. Hotter ones. And let me tell you. I find that I hard to married. believe. I was married. I find that I hard was, to believe. No, I was. I was. You, know, you have I, no I, idea I what I have. Topic. You That's have no idea. Is. You have no idea what I have or what I have had. No idea. Okay, let's say you're the biggest womanizer in the world. But, Tom, let me tell you, I was married. And I had a great marriage. I cheated on my wife. I wasn't listening to your program at the time, but I did. And you know what? Today, I may have a lot hotter, younger chicks, but I am lonely. And that's why every man... That's, that's your There's own nothing problem. wrong with being married. Nothing. That is your own problem. The, you, you shouldn't feel badly living with the person who loves you the most, yourself. Okay, I understand that. Now that I have the best of all worlds, I had a chance to see, just like you. Obviously, you're not doing something right. You've been married four times. Take a look but at But I yourself. ended, I ended every one of them. And you ended every one of them, so that means you've been making four mistakes. At least I've made one. And I'm telling the pal, there, pal, pal, you don't have to get married to make a mistake. Okay. We all make mistakes, but we learn from them. It's good, right? Learn, and but... I'm here. To, I'm here to tell you what I've learned from the mistakes I've made. And one of them is that there is no need to have anyone living in my home. Then, then, then my best. Then we'll end with this. Nothing wrong with trying it out. At least you'll know. I did. How do you know that you? I like tried it out. If you haven't tried it, how do you know that you like women if you haven't slept with them? It's good to try it out. Nothing wrong with being married. Worst case scenario, you there get is a something wrong with being. Worst, case, worst case, worst case scenario. scenario, you get a divorce and you give away half of everything you have. <laughs> You're, that's true. That's why you get a prenup. I, I believe everything you're saying about the prenup. Uh, most of these morons do not get a prenup.
Okay, then they need to listen to Tom Likas' show, get a prenup, get married, try it out, and if it works for you, continue. Get married, live happily ever after. But I personally, I'll tell you, I would trade every hot chick I have today. I have them all. I mean, two, I mean, Tom, everything a man can want. I'm an envy of men, but if I, I'm empty. I'm empty. Well, why don't you, Tom, why don't any why don't any why, why don't any of these women who you're always dating, the hottest women in the world, why don't any of them want to marry you? You know what? They, all, they actually fall in love with me. But you know what? I don't fall in love with them. I wish I could. I wish it was a button, Tom, but it's not. So when you do find that button, keep it. Keep it. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with being loyal. There is you know There is no button. I'd rather have a chick. You know, you know that button from Stables? I'd rather have a chick with the easy button. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here I am at the end of another year living alone. Still blissfully happy with the person who loves me the most. Frazier on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just want to say I started listening to you a year and a half ago, and at the time I was about one year into my sex marriage, and, you know, I thought I was happy. But this uh, broad went home to her mom and dad's house uh, two weeks before Christmas, never came back. So just like you, I've been living this past year alone, and I've never been happier, Tom. Look at that. <laughs> so I just want to say any of my brothers out there uh, who uh, are uh, doubting your advice, uh, you need to think twice and listen to Tom. That's all I want to say. Just thank you with all my heart, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Somebody understands. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Leela on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Leela. How's it going? Great. Yeah, just on the subject of living I'm with someone, and I think that I made a really big mistake a little more than here. Well, more than that. But I had a condo which I absolutely loved it, and my boyfriend talked me into moving into his house because it had a yard and everything, and now I'm living with him, and I don't have anything for me to go fall back on because everything is his rules and everything is about what he wants. No, it's his, really well, it's his place. Say. Yeah, that's what happens. It's his place. Right, and I've... There's no reasoning, and I'm trying to be reasonable, and now I'm, I'm feeling that I need to make some decisions, and, which the other part, too, what I wanted to ask you about. I have a business, and with the economy right now, I have to make a decision whether or not I want to give up my business and go try and find another place to live and, and move out. It's a lot, of, a lot of changes right now. And so. you had a baby. Why? I know... I know. I was using protection. You mean, what were you using? Uh, we were using condoms no. and the Nova ring. And, and we. And it still happened? Yes, and it still happened. And You could have had an abortion. Yes, this is true. And I, I didn't want to go through doing that. And it was something that, at the time, we both had discussed it, and it of course, it always seems like it's, oh, yeah, move into my house, and, and we'll take care of this, and everything will be all honky-dory, and, and there's love, and, and I'm stable, and you're stable, and, and now I'm feeling unstable. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So I, I'm just frustrated with the rules of having to live under someone else's house and i absolutely 100 percent agree it's not always the well best. that is something that people should be aware of when you move to someone else's place it's they safe. they're set in their ways the place belongs to them it's their house their condo their apartment their lease right yeah and so you kind of have to uh, squeeze a square peg into a round hole right yeah. No, and what did you what did you hope though. to what did you hope to gain by moving in? Save money? Uh, uh I think saving some money. 
and to just have the family portion, and now I don't have that with him because it's it feels like a roommate situation. It doesn't feel like it's about us being together in in how it was before. And you could have so kept now. going the way it was before. I know, but I didn't know that. Tom, I just started listening to you. If I would have known this, I would have kept my place and told him, no, I'm comfortable living in my place where I had uh, full, I was comfortable with my finances, but, you know, we both wanted to make sure that we could do this together. You know, you know what I, uh, this is so amazing having this conversation. The, The conversation I have most often uh, both with women I've dated and with friends who are in relationships is if it's going well right now why mm-hmm. why tempt fate yeah like if 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 you had this boyfriend and you were happy in the relationship and oh well you got pregnant and you didn't want to have an abortion that didn't mean you had to move I didn't know that and I wish that I would have stayed in my place. But what's done is done. So now... Um, yeah, I understand. I, but the reason I'm bringing this up is not to not to embarrass you. Sure. I'm bringing it up for the other people who are thinking about doing what you did. Mm-hmm. And, and trying to convince them that because, look how miserable you are. That they could end up like you. If, if you're happy with your life the way it is today, there is there, there is nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I like things the way they are. And I didn't make that choice, and I agree with you, and I hope that if there's other women that are listening, if they move in with somebody and they get into the situation, they're comfortable in their space, it's not necessary to move in with someone else to make it better because it always doesn't make it better. Yeah. Good well, points. Thanks, thanks a lot, Tom. Leela, thank you for the call. Samantha on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Thank you for taking my call. Long-time listener. Sure. Um, I have a situation where, um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I have been in a relationship for the last 15 years. I lived with this man for the last 15 years. I am now 40 years old. I have worked my whole life and been extremely independent. And, um, unfortunately, he's become very, very ill. And so I've been asked to quit my job, which I did to care for him. I'm not married. He will never marry me. Um, My insurance is being um, taken away from me. Well, basically, it's not being renewed. I've been on his insurance for the last 15 years. That is being, um, because we're not married, now the insurance has changed. Um, So I have no job. I'm not married. He will never marry me. And... I'm financially in a very big struggle, and I have nothing, and I was just listening to your last caller. It is a very, very big lesson that I've learned. It's taken me many years, and I've realized that I will never, though I care for him and I do as a goodness my heart and will not leave him during his care, I've realized that it's time for me after when he is well, and I hope he is, to move on, and I will never put myself in a situation where I'm living with a man again. Because my whole, it's just changed everything about being in a relationship and trusting a man. And, you know, having a man tell me for years and years that he will marry me. And even at this very, you know, poignant time in my life, to tell me that he's not going to marry as ill as he is. And it's been heartbreaking. I'm sure it has been. And, uh, you know, this is why I keep trying to remind people of what I'm saying today. That uh, there is nothing wrong with being alone. And when you meet somebody you like, there's nothing wrong with saying, all right, I like this person, but they have their place, and I have my place. Yes. And, you know, we, we, you know, it's wonderful to fall in love, and it's wonderful to have all that. And, you know, I never wanted to have children, and that was okay. And we sacrifice a lot, men and women. And, um... My point is that, you know, I trusted him, not 100%, but I trusted this man very, very much, and I trusted him 99.9%. And, um, you know, after being with someone for so many years... You trusted him to do what? 
Well, I guess I trusted him that he would, you know, eventually marry me. So and, he told you, I'm going to marry you. Many a times, and even through this unfortunate, crucial time of his illness, yes. And I and you've been with him for how many years? I've been with him for 15 years. Well, darling, you know, there comes a time where you have to say, you know what, 15 years ago you were 26 years old. Yeah. And you had about a four-year window of opportunity before the good offers start to dry up. You know, because after 30, the, that, the, that, as a graph, it kind of falls off a cliff. It was your responsibility back then not to give him an ultimatum, but, okay. to, but to simply say, you know what, uh, I'm getting married while I can still get a good offer. You know, Tom, at this point, honestly, in regards to marriage, it has completely changed my whole demeanor, you know, in, as far as marriage. I honestly think going into, like, you know, knowing now that I need to pick up my life and go on, I'm okay with that. And if I never get married, you know what, that's okay. I'm not going to go out there to find someone because I'm lonely, and I'm not leaving because I want to get married. I'm leaving because I realize this man truly doesn't really, really love me to have me stay in his life. Well, I mean, uh, you know, again, does he love you? Uh, I don't think whether someone marries you or not tells you whether they love you. Well, I think it becomes a point, too, which I'm a frightened of. And, you know, if I'm being selfish, you know, I, you know, I apologize. But I'm afraid. I have nothing. I have no pension. I, you know, those things that you, you know, you talk about as you become a couple and you're married about things that this is what I'm going to do for you. Should anything happen to me? And unfortunately... Oh, those... but you could have, you would have been very reasonable to say... I would not quit my job for somebody I'm not married to. I just wouldn't do it. You know, Tom, I was I was being too nice. I really was. And unfortunately, it's put me in a very, very sad position today. I understand. And I will never, ever do this again for anybody. <laughs> you know, I gave up, I gave up having a family and children and... I had an incredible job that I cannot get back today. And as time goes on and the economy is so horrific, it's even, you know, it's even puts me even in the worst, you know, position of finding, you know, a job. And, you know, I have to be thankful that I do have my um, health, you know, that I'm not in the position that he's in. But it has really, truly just changed me completely and not in a bad way. I've learned a very, very big lesson. And I certainly will not put myself in this position again, ever. How many good opportunities for employment or for a man did you pass up over 15 years? You know, um, I have to tell you, many. It's been more than a handful. I'm, you know, it's not, you know, we're we're all educated. We're, you know, no one's better than anyone else. I'm, I have, you know, a college education. I've passed up many opportunities. And, you know, that's okay. I can't cry about that now. Um, and um, I know, I know, I'm sure I would, you know, it, again, it's not about finding someone else. It would be wonderful to find someone. And, you know, honestly, Tom, this person I've been with has, you know, a large income. And I have to tell you, that's meant nothing to me. And I truly just want to find someone who's just nice to me and just who respects me. That's that's all I want. Well, what you need now is not someone who respects you. You need to live with the person who loves you the most, yourself. That's hard to do. Why? <laughs> because we've had someone for 15 years who's made you feel like you are worth nothing. That's hard to do. Uh, nobody can do that without your cooperation. I know that. And it's a long road ahead. I know that. But I'll continue to go on. You know, there are going to be moments where I'm going to feel sorry for myself, but I will continue to go on. And, and it's been 
uh, you just can't believe. I'm sure anyone can relate to someone who's perhaps been, you know, divorced or a horrific heartbreak, how someone can do that to you in the very end. You know, it's just, uh, you just cannot believe it. It's a very, very bad, horrific dream. Well, I understand that, but it, it all speaks to what I was saying in the beginning, and that is that uh, we need to be dependent on ourselves, not on other people, for what we need. You know, Tom, it's a very good point, and I remember that. And unfortunately, I've depended on this person for the last 15 years, regardless of, you know, having the independence of working and having my own money, I did depend on this person. And um, I'm and this is just, at the age of 40, you know, it's, um, I have to start all over again. And, you know, I'm willing to do that. I'm, that's okay. I have no other choice. But don't make the same mistake you made last time. I will be never. Because you're talking about needing to be in another relationship. That's exactly what got you here. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likes Show. Here I am, your genial host, celebrating another year of living alone. <laughs> Reminding you to live with the person who loves you the most. You. It's one 800 800 tom George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Man, I need your help. Okay. Well, I need you, Actually, I need your advice. Um, I already kind of like thought about what to do but my situation is i got married like almost two years ago and before i got married i obviously knew that my wife already owned the home previously and uh her mother lived with her so you know i said all right you know i moved in whatever. why did you say all right to that why did i say all right to that yeah well i figured like her and i would buy a house eventually together or live on our own so why couldn't, you, been, why couldn't you live on your own from the beginning well, I did, I did live on my own. I did. No, no, with her. If you're going to be married, why why couldn't you just live with your wife? Okay, well, she, you know, I, I jumped in. She was, I should have, I should have, like, when I was living on my own, that's where I screwed up, I think. I should have, like, moved, like told, told her to come live with me, even though she's had a mortgage to pay. But now I'm in a situation where I've been there for two and a half, almost, well, two years, almost two years. Well, actually, a little bit past two years. And I've already told her, like, this January, you know, from her, her mom and I fighting so much, like it's time for us to move on, and you know live live on our own, you know, you know enjoy our marriage. And I gave her a deadline like January, and she said she didn't like a deadline, and then she said February, and then just yesterday she said March, maybe June. Well, and it's just... time for you to go, George. I mean, I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yeah, mean, that's 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 what I'm planning on doing. Because I mean, I wouldn't she's... plan on doing it. I'd be doing it now. Yeah, ASAP. I just got my paycheck right now, too. I mean, you but, understand. Uh, did you make more money than your wife? Uh, right now, yeah. Yeah. She's going to school. I'm, I'm paying all the bills. Well, since, like, March. That, that, means you'll be paying, that means you'll be paying vagina money. Mm -hmm. And for every two days you stay, you owe her another day of alimony. Yeah, yeah. So you, you should not wait three months. That'll mean another month and a half of alimony you'll have to pay. <laughs> I guess so. Huh? No, no, uh, no, no, no. If that's the law, yeah, uh -huh. you you should be filing for a separation like tomorrow. Like tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give her the the, the ultimatum of. I, I by move the on. way, if you if you're asking for advice, I don't believe in giving an ultimatum. Yeah, I I don't give ultimatums. I I simply say um, I don't want to live this way. And so, therefore, I'm leaving. That's it. Yeah. Done. And so if, I, she says, if she says, okay, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with you and I'm not going to stay with my mom. Well, f fine. But that way you still didn't give an ultimatum. Yeah. Okay. Do, do not lower yourself to give me an ultimatum. Okay. Tell her the date you're leaving. Tell her the day I'm leaving and, and just do it. Or tell her that you are leaving. Because, well, here's the thing. You don't want to have all that drama. Yeah. When you do leave, you want to be able to come get your stuff without her getting in the way. Okay. Or your mother-in-law getting in the way. Okay. So at some point, you're going to need to find a day when the two of them are out of the house. 
then you're going to need to call your buddies or call the moving company and have them unload the house as quickly as possible and then uh, move to your new place. Yeah, yeah. you got to do it. Okay, Tom. Uh, take me out THX style, man. I, nah, I, I wish I could, but we got, we got to cease and desist. They won't let us do it anymore, for God's sake. George Lucas didn't like us using that. Oh, well. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Uh, echoing everything people are saying, I never thought I'd have to make this call, so it pains me, but I want to warn your listeners and, and tell you you were right. I'm uh, in my mid-30s. Thought I had the system beat, no kids, uh, never been married, hadn't lived with anyone in about 10 years, thought I'd found a girl in L.A. that defied the system, that wasn't a gold digger, that was cool with everything, didn't want kids, didn't want to get married, was fine splitting everything. That was always big for me. I'm not going to pay for everything. Um, put about two and a half years in. Everything seemed great. I stupidly moved in with her. I stupidly sold all, a lot of my stuff because I felt you can't say, well, honey, I'm going to put everything in storage just in case it doesn't work out. So, But that's what I should have done. I should have put it all in storage and, and hid it and had it there as a backup. And um, sure enough, she was nothing like the person I thought she was. It's amazing how once you live with someone, how quickly the layers dissipate. The and minute you, you give them the key, that's when things begin to change. It was uh, unbelievable. She turned out to be a liar, a cheater, a manipulator. I found her diary, and I found all these entries about how cheap I am. And, you know, all along, everything was just a front. Why Why they they, they put all that front on to be with someone that they're not really happy with, I, I'll never understand. But long story short, when I caught her, the day I caught her, I said, pack a bag, you're out. Kicked her out. And, um, and then once I found a place, made her move back in and made her take over the house payments. And... Um, uh, you know, and finally now I'm back. And never again, Tom. I, I thought I had beat the system. I thought I'd found the exception to the rule. I'm a pretty savvy guy. I've dated a lot. I thought I was done with all that, but I got a nice place again. I'm on my own. And, uh, and I just got to tell you, you were, you were right all along. Well, David, I hate to say I told you so because it's the story of my life, but I'm glad you learned. Thank you. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. Coming to the end of another year of living alone. Still loving it. 1 800 866 It's Sal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Tom, I am a first time caller, short time off and on listener. I uh, just wanted to call and let people know that are listening to you that I think they're confusing the difference between being alone and being lonely. Many people make that mistake. Uh, and I think your situation in particular, I think just because people see that you are alone, they automatically assume that you are lonely. Many do. And and in, in my personal perspective, I've been alone most of my life. I, I am in my uh, mid-30s and still unmarried. Uh, but for the most part, I've been alone. But for that part, I haven't really been lonely. And I, I do believe you don't have to live alone forever. If you want to have a relationship at some point, that's fine. But I think you have to live alone to know who you are. Oh, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I am in a relationship right now, and I am living with uh, my girlfriend at this time. Uh, but I have figured out who I am, what I like, what my likes, what my dislikes are, uh, and have brought those into the relationship. And as I tell my girlfriend all the time, I am my own man, and, and she is her own woman, and, and we are individuals. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I hope it keeps going. I wouldn't live with my girlfriend, but there you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mac on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you, buddy? Great. Listen, I've been a long-time listener since the beginning, and i got to tell everybody out there in Tom Likas land, do not get married. I've been married to the same woman 20 years. It's been a hell relationship. I loved her when she gained 100 pounds the first two years of the marriage. Uh, I loved her when she wouldn't bathe, uh, shut off sex uh, maybe once every few months in the first 11 and a half years of marriage. 
Now she's uh, wanted a divorce, threatened my job, and uh, I got me a lawyer, and she was pissed off about that, and it's just been hell at home. I'm buying a house on my own, first time in my life, four blocks away so I can visit my kids. And, Tom, you know what the real kicker of this is? No. She's had online sexual, and I mean super kink crap on the Internet, uh, love relationships online, and she is actually world famous for writing anti-feminist pro-men's rights propaganda on different websites. <laughs> yeah, she's for men's rights, just not this man's rights after 20 years. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I found out she's been laying the groundwork for this for three years. I start collecting evidence. I've got two inches thick of solid paperwork printouts of her little uh, email tryst. And uh, she's fighting me tooth and nail. Wants the kids, wants uh, the retirement, the investments, everything. And she's going to get uh, alimony for the rest of her life. Well, maybe not. I don't think they do that in Oregon. Plus, she brings home uh, way more than I do. Really? That's yeah, so... Uh, so you, you know, might you might get alimony. Well, you know what? I'll settle for 50% custody of my kids. Incidentally, when we had those kids, she lost all the weight, started turning on the, the lovemaking, and then as soon as the kids uh, were uh, born, bam, 100, 120 pounds heavier. That's what happens. I'm telling you, listen to everybody. Listen to my story. Listen to Tom. I'm 45 years old. And I'm starting life all over from scratch and not by choice. Thank you for that, Mac. Sorry to hear it. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Hey, man, I'm in a predicament, and I need some advice, and uh, I know you're the guy to talk to about that. Okay. Um started dating a girl about three months ago. Um, everything was going fine. Once in a while when we talk on the phone, and I had never gone to her place, um, I heard what I thought was, you know, a kid in the background, but she claimed it was a niece. So, you know, thinking that women, or she was honest, um, I took her word for it, and um, come to find out that she has a four-year-old daughter, which um, obviously is difficult for me. Should um, be a deal breaker. I've never been in a situation like that before. Should be a deal breaker. Um, say that again? It should be a deal breaker. Yeah, um, I, I think I was uh, she was absolutely beautiful and, and I think I was more in it for the physical part of it and one night I was good to go on a double date with uh, a, a guy friend of mine and he calls me aside while we're at dinner and says that uh, you never told me you were dating a porn star. <laughs> and I, I said, I had no idea. And he goes, dude, I've seen her many times. And so, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so what do you think? What do you What do I think? Single mom. God only knows where that thing has been. Are you kidding yeah. me? No, I know it's. You know, when the sex is great, it's, I, I now know Now why. you know why. You're with a pro. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're thinking uh, get rid of it? I mean, obviously, the and I, I mean, I, I feel bad because it got to the point where at one point I, I was okay with it for a little bit, but she actually asked me to take the kid to school. There we go. And uh, have you ridden bareback at all? No, absolutely not. Boy, um, that, that's something I definitely wouldn't do. But I want to tell you something. I would be out, out, out. You got what you got. Now she's asking you to take the kid to school. Now she's pushing it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Long time listener, man. Doing okay. Hey, I'm kind of like the guy that just got off the phone. I'm 45 years old and was in a 20-year marriage, man, and... Uh, I, you know, I did some bad things like what men will do. You know, I went out, but she cheated on me first. And just so happens, like I told her, you know, we both did the same thing. I just had to happen to be blessed with two kids outside of my marriage. But make a long story short, we put our lives back together and went on. And 
here about a year or two, about a year and a half ago, she tells me she wants a divorce, and come to find out she was with her boss, and she's been with her boss ever since, and I love it because I'm by myself now, and I'm taking care of my kids, and I'm living life, and I couldn't be more happier. Being alone is the best. The best! And I'll tell you what's really weird now. See, she called herself stabbing me in the stomach with the knife, and she's she's where she is right now is in Texas. She's lost three cars and can't be stable, and we have a son together, and the son is with me, and the guy that she's with, her boss, hasn't... It hasn't helped her with any bills, hasn't helped her. She lost her car. So I'm saying to myself, I talked to her a couple of weeks ago and said, wow, he, you know, he's a real businessman. I mean, but actually he was doing what I should have did, made her stand on her own two feet. No doubt about it. More people ought to be doing it. I'm a big, big fan of living alone. And, uh, you know, when I get to the holidays, I always think about how it's another year that's passed. Because uh, that's when it originally happened at the holidays. I'm way happier, continue to be way happier, and uh, life has uh, been great, great, great ever since, really. Linda, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Yeah, long, time, long, long time listener. Um, I, I love the way you think. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. the way you think. I've, I've tried marriage. Um... Years ago, I'm 57 years old, so you're talking to experience. Uh huh. Uh, I tried a marriage when I was about 21 years old, hated it, got out of it. I uh, lived single, had two children though, raised them by myself, you know, self contained. Uh, loved it, loved being single, and I made a mistake, lived with a guy, and go, oh my God, I knew it as soon as I let him move in. <laughs> You know, but I finally got him out. When I got him out, I said, never do it again. I'm, I'm happy with myself. That's the most important thing. Linda, thank you so much for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at LomiUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.